Hello viewers, Super GT here. If you head on to Gran Turismo Sport at the moment, you will see this, the road to Gran Turismo 7. It's a four round championship to close out racing on this game before GT7 comes out in a few weeks. For the first round, we are going to be using this, the 4GT40 around this circuit, the Tokyo Expressway South Inner Loop. Quite an unusual track, quite an unusual car to get to grips with. And at quite a tricky corner there, that triple right-hander. There's also this hairpin. There's also lots of lo uh, long straights, which would be very, very important during the races. And um, one of the most important things about this series uh, is the fact that it's a tuning series. So normally on this game, you don't normally have to change the setup of the car. It's all done by BOP and it's all done automatically. But for this one, um, I was using the setup of AMS Dude um, who kindly provided his setup online. Also Melvin on Melvin 2004 on Twitter helped me out as well. Um, I'll put them in the description. Let's quickly go through the first race here. Um, so this is lap three. I started 15th, at this point in 13th, just going for 12th. You can see there's a bit of a gap to the cars in front and that's a problem around this race. Long straights and fuel saving turned out to be very, very important. Although at the time of this race, I didn't know that. So I was driving the car pretty hard. And it was at this point here when we go into the pit lane, which is quite an unusual pit lane in a car park, essentially. That I discovered that I had used way too much fuel in the first part of the race, making really not much of an effort to save any of it. And ultimately, I came home in a fight for 16th which was pretty disaster disastrous and just not really good enough. I was in the top split though, so I was up against the very best guys. Um, but we finished 16th. So I decided to jump into the replay, have a look at what the other guys were doing. And it was clear to me very quickly that they were short shifting. They were making a very big effort to save fuel. And then that would subsequently save time in the pit lane. So when they jump into the pit lane here, they had far more fuel than I did. So with that information in mind, it was time to jump back into the second race and go again. Try to improve our score, try to improve the way we were driving, which was quite frankly not good enough. So for this one, qualifying. Qualifying is really important, especially in fuel saving races where you want to be starting as far forward as possible to help you with the fuel. But for this qualifying session, things were just a little bit off. It seemed like the two guys in front of me wanted to fight a little bit too much rather than setting a quick lap. So, yes, you want to be behind some players to get the slipstream, but at the same time, you kind of hope that they drive quickly. Otherwise, you just catch up with them and then you're not you're getting held up. And you can see here, we're kind of fighting over each other and it's not quite the cleanest of qualifying laps you've ever seen. So we cross the line, we set a 214.7 which is okay, and then he kind of braked there and then ruined up my next lap. So I, I tried again, both for another lap, coming through the first corner, just completely made a hash of it. Uh, I would rate that turn about 2 out of 10 there. So I had to quit, bail out, and I qualified 14th on the grid, so just not, not really good enough, to be honest. But give it a jolly good go, try and save fuel straight from the off here. We're going to lean mix. So the main way is really to save fuel, short shift, shifting up early, but also using the leaner mixtures at certain points of the track. So learning from the first race, we'll try and do a better job here and hopefully get a bit more luck with the slipstream from other cars and see where we can end up. It's always a fun one when you have to try and make your way forward tactically with the fuel and play the long game. It's not always about just going for overtakes all the time at every corner. Sometimes you can just sit behind, play it patient, wait for the later laps, and then it's your time to strike. So we'll see how this one pans out. We head down towards the Docklands section for the first time. Quite a big braking zone here, looking for that 150 board and braking just before it. And then you've got this very peculiar sort of triple right-hander. Seemed to go seemingly on forever. And you have to be very careful on the exit here to not go three wheels beyond the the, the white line. It's very easy to do that. But we get through just about okay. 
And then this right hand is very important as well, because this one leads out onto a very long straight section, which isn't straight, but it's flat out. So as you can see here, just through the tunnel, not much work to do. This corner there, a little bit tricky at full speed, but into the hairpin at the end of the straight, and we are very much in contact with the group in front. That's okay. So it's actually quite a close-knit group. You can see the train of cars going up the hill here. So everyone just biding their time, being nice and patient, and you know trying to preserve their fuel for later in the race. And then at the end of the lap, you have this fast sweeping section. This was the circuit they, they used for the Olympics qualifier. So for those of you who sweated that one out, you'll probably be very familiar with this track, like I like I was when I hit this barrier on the exit of this final corner about four gazillion times. But um, that's the end of first lap, right? And not much change. We've uh, saved for more fuel than we did in the first race, so that's a good sign. Into, into the uh, Dockland section, and we get overtaken here by Antonio SK. I know he's very quick. I think he um, got a bit unlucky in qualifying. So uh, that's okay. He's gone past, but... He looks like he's got good pace, so we can just try and tag along with him as he tries to make his way up the order. But sometimes that's what you want. You want someone else to kind of do the work. And then you can kind of just tag along in their slipstream and then hopefully make some progress with them. So we're going to be quite lazy and just let them do the work. Although by this point here, coming under attack from, a, from another Frenchman, Antonio goes very deep into that corner going for the move. He's, he's clearly being quite aggressive and just going for the overtakes as he's more than entitled to do. And he, I, I suppose he has to be, because he started towards the back of the pack. But eventually he does get that move done on the German, moving himself up to 13th. So we're still here in 15th, finding our time. You can see the, the, the group of cars up in front hasn't really you know, broken up too much. Uh, German there making a big mistake on the exit of the final corner, very easy to do that. So we're just gonna glide, uh, glide on by Look at the map, look how close it is between the top, well, I mean, the top two have gone, but then from third back to where I am, it's, it's like one train of cars. So we're in with a, ch uh, in with a chance, in, in with a shout here of still getting into the top 10. And to be honest, I'll be very happy with that, given that this is the top split. Um, some very, very good drivers in here. And um, normally for these kind of championships, guessing anything above 250 points is good. German coming in for a very late uh, dive bomb. I think he must have just misjudged his braking. And uh, he ends up clattering into the side of the Spanish driver. So we're going to gain a position there, up into 13th. This is lap 6 now, still in 13th. Just biding our time. And um, coming up towards the pit phase of the race. So we still have two laps of fuel left. Now this track is very unusual in the sense that the pit lane is halfway around the track. Most, pretty much every track in motorsport will have the pit lane on the same straight as the finish line. But this track is very, very different. Now at this point, this was a crucial phase of the race. We, we lost touch with that group in front, but then they just began to fight a little bit. And this gave me a, just about a chance of trying to catch up. So as we look here, the gap coming down to almost seven tenths. And if I can just take this next corner perfectly, I can just tag along onto the back of that group and get into the slipstream. That will be crucial for our race. I've just managed to pull away from the group behind who started fighting. So if I can make some forward progress here, that'd be great. And I just managed to do it. I take the first corner about as well as I've done in the whole race. And I've managed just about to get onto this group. You see here on the break, it's getting very, very close indeed. But this is a, a very positive development for this race, getting onto the back of this big group. And I think the guy at the front of this group is in about third or fourth. So it's a very, very close-knit group here. As we head into um, the pit phase of the race, we are going to be pitting in just a moment's time. We don't have enough fuel to go around again. So we've done pretty good on the fuel uh, so far. In the previous race, we would have uh, run out by now for sure. So. Uh, at this point here, you notice that uh, down this straight, into the slipstream, I'm just going to put it into lean mix. So just to save a little bit more fuel as uh, we head into the pit lane. So it's quite a weird entry here into the pit lane. You kind of just take a bit more speed into this hairpin and then just go into the car park. It's a very weird, very, very weird pit lane. 
This, this time deciding not to change tires. And looking at the amounts of fuel there that people have, I think I'm on a, I'm on a par with most of the players there. So I'm, I'm in the right kind of area in terms of the amount of fuel that I used. So uh, doing a much better job compared to the first race. And you always have to learn from, the, from your mistakes. So we just managed to uh, tuck in here behind VQS Jack. And we're currently in 12th. Now this is a very important phase again. Um, I identified one of the most important sort of aspects of this race was the slipstream and therefore just making sure you don't lose the toe. And again, just look at the group in front. As the cars just come out of the pit lane in front of each other, a bit of jostling for position and they managed to uh, lose a lot of time. Jack there making a mistake into the wall. We're going to go past him and we're up into 11th. And at this point here, we only have 2.8 laps of fuel remaining with three laps remaining. So we're actually under fueled at the moment. So we do have to make a conscious effort to save a bit more fuel compared to the first seven laps of the race. A Haku there making a mistake on the exit of the first corner shows you just how easy it is to do just to drift slightly wide. This car is actually quite floaty, not particularly grippy. And you do kind of have to get it a little bit sideways to really get the speed through the corners. Um, but it's very easy to drift slightly wide and just go into the barrier. As soon as you do that, you're losing a lot of time down the long straights. So we've moved up into 10th. A couple of mistakes there from the other drivers, and uh, we're just going to try and capitalise on that. And that's why consistency and, make, and not making mistakes is, is very crucial in, in racing. Just slowly make your way up the order as others begin to make a couple of errors. So here, lap 8, 2.5 to go. And we sat in 10th, and this is actually a very good position. I know it's 10th, like, it's, it's not 1st, but I, I did say that, you know, this is a top split. So we're up against some of the very best players in the game here. I think to be anywhere towards the front is uh, it's not very easy at all. So here again, I was in danger of losing the toe to the cars in front. Didn't have the best of hairpins, didn't get on the power early enough. And here, let's just take a closer look at the gap here, because... This, again, is such a crucial aspect. And I just drift a little bit wide there. Don't get the best of exits. And I'm just going to drop out of slipstream range off the car in front. So I, I have to absolutely nail this corner here. And I'm just going to get that rotation very nicely done. Get on the power as early as possible. The Spaniard in front makes a bit of a mistake gliding into the barrier. And thankfully, we escape again. We're just back into the slipstream. So I'm really living life on the edge right now. And let's take a look in front because the Frenchman there has a penalty to serve. So this could change things a little bit. As Haku behind also has a penalty. And su surprisingly to me, he went actually up the inside there. Didn't really expect him to do that. Uh, so we lose a bit of momentum on the exit. But thankfully just managed to keep the position. And thankfully as well, just managed to stay in the slipstream. This was uh, very, very close indeed. I think he wanted to be very aggressive knowing that he's got to serve this penalty. So I go defensive, he goes right around the outside. He actually almost pulls this off. It's actually a really good attempt. I thankfully managed to get on the power just about early enough. And I can just, just about slot in ahead and keep 10th. So he almost managed to get that position around the outside. But um, just over a lap to go. It looks like we're in a good fight here for 8th position. And that would be a good result starting 15th, or sorry, starting 14th up against some very, very fast players to make any progress in this kind of lobby. Not easy at all. Frenchman just glancing the barrier on the inside there into the final corner. Get on the power as early as possible. Try to avoid the barrier. And we do that just about. Look how close this is. Battle for eighth has about seven cars in it. As we cross the line, we've only got 0 0.9 laps of fuel remaining with one lap left to do. So again, we're still going to have to save a tiny bit more fuel from here to the end. I break a little bit too late into the first corner into the back of the Frenchman nudges him a little bit wide and on the exit I don't manage to get in line properly and annoyingly I don't have the slipstream with the car in front and I can't move to the side because there's someone there so Jack is going to go through here no it's Haku on the inside Jack just looking for the overtake just behind so I'm out of position here I'm on the wrong kind of side into the Dockland corner Haku up the inside he's going to serve his penalty in just a moment so this chance of 8th place is slowly looking harder and harder as Jack goes up the inside, carries a little bit too much speed, goes into the side of the Spaniard and ends up careering off to the right-hand side of the track. Haku then serves his penalty, but you don't actually lose too much time serving this penalty on this track. 
So he actually stays in ninth there. It's like the Frenchman in eighth, just beginning to escape here. So now, realistically, ninth might be our best option or best chance. And um, the Spaniard there making a very slow exit. So I'm just going to capitalise on that and go through up into 10th. Still in the top 10. Can we get one more position here past Haku? Perhaps a little bit too far behind to go for this move into the into the hairpin. Very easy to overcook it into here. So I go narrow. I get slightly bumps from behind. And then in turn get pushed into Haku. Just look how many players there are behind here. If I make one big mistake or if I run out of fuel I'm going to lose like six positions. So thankfully... Haku does manage to get back here because it would have been harsh for him to lose uh, positions there given that contact was not his fault at all. But we only have about four corners left to go in the race and I have 2% of fuel left. Can I make it to the end in the top 10? Will anyone else run out of fuel? That's the question. Take a look. 1% of fuel into the final corner. We have still quite a long run to the, uh, to the finish line. Glancing the barrier on the exit and then running up to the finish line on 0% fuel and we're just going across in the nick of time in the top 10 and I actually think that was a very good result started 14th it's always going to be hard to make loads of progress fair enough to Antonio there who started outside of the top 14 and finished in top 5 um, but we've got 247 points there so not too bad at all but I do sense that we could do better than that, given that um, I think my qualifying could improve. That's the one thing I was identifying here as um, the main reason I didn't really get well inside the top 10. I think the qualifying needed to be better. Starting 14th, you know, you're always going to have a lot of work to do from that kind of position. But if you can start well inside the top 10, it's going to always make your life a lot easier. So we're going to try and go for a better qualifying lap here, starting a good distance behind this Greek driver. And this should be able to help us gain a couple of tenths on our lap. So we still have to nail the corners. But we're just going to gain a couple of tenths for free here. So if you take a look here on the exit of the first corner. And then compare that to the end of the straight. You see just how much I've gained. And that's just free time. Uh, all of that time is just gained completely for free. And it's probably a couple of tenths. And you know when, when a grid is so close that couple of attempts is going to make a difference to a couple of positions at least into the hairpin i felt like i was quicker than this guy so i decided to go for the uh, overtake normally you don't really overtake in qualifying but on this lap i did and go past him and now it's just really a case of trying to set a good final sector in the last couple of races we were in the mid 214s like 214.5 214.7 I really needed to get into the low 214s, or ideally the, the 213s, if at all possible. One more corner left to go on this lap, getting that rotation done nicely onto the power as early as possible. And actually this sets up perfectly for another lap because we're just into the slipstream of the French driver in front. So we can go for another lap here. This is really good. This has actually worked out perfectly. We set a 214.1 and I'm pretty happy with that. This is fifth uh, at the time of setting the lap. Oh, we're going to try and go again here for another lap. So once again, into the slipstream. And this is going to help us massively on our lap. And thankfully, we had um, the Swedish driver just behind. Anderson wanted to help us out. So he's going to bump draft us a little bit on this lap. And that's actually really crucial. You need to kind of form alliances on qualifying on tracks with long straights and kind of help each other out with bump drafting. And thankfully, I have an ally here. So into the right-hander just before the back straight. Again, crucial corner. Got to get on the power as early as possible. It wasn't quite the smoothest corner, but we do have the benefit of the slipstream once again. From the Frenchman all the way down this long straight. We seem to go seemingly on forever. And um, again, going to go for the overtake into the chicane. Looking for the shadow just after the 200 board. And then that's your, your breaking point for the, for the hairpin. Overshoot slightly, but not too bad. But that was a decent hairpin. And again, we just have one more sector left to go. And if I get this right, I know that I'm in for a good lap. And we're actually currently a quarter of a second up on the 214.1. So if I can just keep this up to the end, we're into the 213s. Let's see if we can do it. Getting that rotation nicely. And it's by this point in the day, you know, we've done two races already and a fair amount of practice as well. So 
it's getting really comfortable with the car. It's not an easy car to drive, but the more you drive it, you know, the more comfortable you get. Crossing the line, 213.9, put sixth on the grid, which actually turned out to be seventh once the qualifying had fully elapsed. And there we go, six tenths away from pole position. And actually, I'm very pleased with that lap. I think that was a very good lap. And we have one final chance to try to get a good result here in the first round of the Road to GT7 Championship. And what I would say to begin with is I was very much put off by the fact that it was the tuning championship and by the calendar in general. But, um, you know, by after racing this car for a fair amount of time, I actually thought it was actually quite fun, even with the tuning aspect. Now, what wasn't fun is getting a penalty on the first lap, as you can see there, just pushing a little bit too hard to stay in touch with the group in front. It's, you know, I've mentioned it about four gazillion times in this video, but staying in touch is so important with the group in front. Um, but unfortunately there, we get pushed wide at the hairpin and uh, almost lose two positions. We lose one position. And quite crucially, we lose contact with that top six group. You see they're about a second ahead there, maybe a bit more. Um, so the more that happens, you know, the harder you're making it for yourself long term in the race. Because now we're going to have to put extra effort in, extra work in to try to catch up with that group or just hope that they start fighting with each other. But at this point, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of them. Um, Eddie there making a mistake on the exit of the final corner. You see, very common mistake to make. Very easy to do that. And um, he's going to lose a bunch of positions. The Italian goes through. Bit of a bump draft from behind, but we're going to settle in here into eight. So it's not a complete disaster. So, yes, we've lost a position. We still have to serve a penalty, and we've lost touch with that group in front. It's a long race yet. We'll be nice and patient. And uh, let, let's just see how this one pans out. Still plenty of time left to do something. So, saving a bit more fuel into the Docklands. Just uh, cranking it into... Uh, lean mix six for a couple of seconds. The Italian forgetting to turn into the corner there and deciding to go straight on. We just, oh, we kept that in track limits. It looked like we might have cut the corner again, but thankfully we didn't. I think I was in by one pixel. Serving the penalty. Let's see how this one pans out. It's going to be a bit chaotic. So the Italian goes up the inside and actually kind of settles down quite nicely there. I would have thought that would have been a bit more chaotic. But uh, we only lose one position as a result. So it's quite clear to me now that the top six are gone. And this is probably very much a race for seventh now. It's going to be very hard unless one of that top six group ends up um, in the Shadow Realm or meeting Barry R. Then it's going to be very hard to beat them. Uh, so into the hairpin. The uh, Czech driver there actually going up the inside, gaining a couple of positions. Actually a very tidy overtake. Fair, fair enough. And we have uh, three drivers in very close proximity behind, ready to take over any position that might come their way. Uh, so we have the top six, then we have this group of six. We're in the second group of six here. And you, you often find that these races kind of form into groups where people just settle in this, into, into a nice little slipstream uh, race. So the Czech driver's going for the move there. Gets the Italian. He's going to take over the lead of the group. I don't think there's much need necessarily to be the leader of the group. Sometimes it's better to be the second second guy. You can save a bit more fuel in the slipstream and uh, play the long game. He's in the first corner. Just trying to get this one right. And you know what? I, I felt like I was being nice and consistent. My pace wasn't absolutely electric, but I felt like I wasn't making too many mistakes by this point in the day. Making a, a decent amount of uh, consistent laps. Um, so here, a couple of the guys behind just started to fight a little bit. And there was a chance we could break away as a three. Look at that. They are going in there three abreast as we look behind temporarily. And that's the kind of fighting we need to see. Because it's only going to slow them down. It gives us a chance here just to break away and uh, leave them in the dust a little bit further behind. And actually, on the exit of the, the dock section... The gap has increased to 1.3 seconds, so they're outside of slipstream range. We have actually broken clear here, and that is good news. Just less people to worry about in your fight. So, a couple of laps later, you know, we're just trying to pull away. 
and um, here the Italian just, I mean, I mean, maybe by a pixel, drives beyond the track limits, gets himself a 0.5 second penalty and has to serve it. Here we go, one lap later on lap six. See if we can gain this position. We aren't right on his bumper, but uh, we, I decided just to go through him so I can take the racing line here and thankfully it worked. And uh, just keep into the toe of the check driver. So we've just gained a position there, three, nicely done. Into the hairpin, lap number six, still got 19% of fuel, so we can go around for one more lap here. And just doing another, a decent job with the fuel. We'll see in one lap's time when we go into the pit lane. And um, again, I was just, just, um, just within um, reach of the slipstream. In fact, actually, I just lost it from the car in front. He's eight tenths ahead. So this was a crucial section here. I'm eight tenths behind. I need to get this dead right to make sure I stay in the slipstream onto the back straight. Can I do it? Can I make, manage to get a good line through here? I think the check driver was also aware of that because it kind of perhaps pressured him into cutting the corner. He gets himself a penalty. So I, th I think he was aware that it was very nip and tuck in terms of my slipstream. And he just perhaps was distracted by that, making a mistake, uh, getting himself a 0.5 second penalty. We're going to go into the pit lane here. I've only got 3% of fuel. We have to go in now. A couple of the drivers in front going in as well. And they have a varying amount of fuel. Some some with 13, some with 22%, some with zero. So kind of in the middle there. We exit the pit lane with 46% fuel. Three laps left to go, or three and a half. And we are currently in 10th. Now you might be wondering how have I lost positions? Well, Actually, a couple of guys haven't pitted yet, so we're gonna we're still gonna claw back a couple of positions once those guys do go into the pit lane. But uh, we resume the race here, just behind the check driver, as you were basically. But it looks like the Italian it shows you here how useful fuel saving is. Because the Italian who I was battling with is now up in seventh, about two, two maybe three seconds up the road. So he saved a lot of time in the, in the pit lane by not having to fuel as much. So he's done a really good job there. Check driver going to serve the penalty. Are we going to move our position? Yes, we are. Into ninth. And uh, we have a, a two and a half laps left to go at this point. So we, we're getting towards the end now. A couple of guys going in. You see there, look how close they are on. 0% fuel, 1% fuel. Uh, so people cutting it very, very fine. The margins are very, very fine in this race. And uh, you had to be really perfect if you wanted to... You know, make your way through the order a significant amount. And uh, at this point, moving up into seventh, courtesy of those a couple of those guys going into the pit lane. So we're back to where we started. We started the race in seventh. We are now in seventh. But it's not going to be an easy finish here because we don't have the slipstream from anyone ahead. The car in front is two and a half seconds up the road. So I'm kind of a sitting duck here against Wheeling. It becomes my main rival for this position from here to the end of the race. So he's going to go for the move there. I'm not really going to fight it. I'm going to let him go through. I'm kind of content with just sitting in the slipstream for a lap and saving a bit more fuel and then perhaps using the save fuel on the final lap to just to push that a little bit harder. So let's see how this one pans out. Into the slipstream, very, very close behind, just um, whipping the fuel mix down a little bit, leaning it out, saving more fuel as much as possible. And wheeling, making a bit of an error there into the wall. Going through this chicane, it's actually a very difficult chicane. It's, it's flat out, but you do have to get that dead right. Looking up the inside, and really that was more of a defensive move to stop the check driver behind going for a move. Just wanted to settle in behind and just preserve my position, consolidate eighth. There must have been some sort of altercation there bet uh, between the, the, the drivers behind as. Um, Look like the check driver's actually gone down into 11th, so he's lost two positions there. And now, hopefully, I can just begin to edge away here with wheeling, and there'll be a two horse race, seventh. Into the final corner, lap number nine. One lap left to go in this one. And we're, we're seeking a top seven. I just crazed the barrier. I haven't made that mistake pretty much in all the races, and I just do it at the wrong moment. And I'm just on the fringes here of the slipstream. 
I have to nail this first corner. Otherwise, he's going to get away. I really do have to get this right. He's seven tenths ahead now. So this is an absolutely crucial corner. I have to nail it. And I get it pretty much bang on. Right up against the wall. On the apex. On the exit. And I'm back to six tenths. Back to five tenths. The guys behind are battling. This is, this is going my way rather than uh, dropping backwards. You know, if I had messed up that first corner, I could have easily fallen into the clutches of the cars behind. But thankfully, just getting that right. And now I'm on the front foot onto the back of wheeling once again. We can have a battle, hopefully, down towards the hairpin on the final lap. Did you get this bit right? Don't get a penalty. Make sure you get, the, get a good exit. The car's behind 1.3 seconds behind now. They've been fighting too much. Don't have to worry about them. Let's just try and get this corner dead right. Get a good exit and then get into that slipstream and see how close we can get towards the hairpin. Five temps behind. Guys behind 1.6 seconds, so they are they're well off now. Don't have to worry about them. We're looking for seventh. Six percent of fuel left at this point. So oh, it's it's gonna be close. I'm still trying to save a little bit. But then whacking it back into mix one, the most powerful setting. So you can see just as we ease up to the balls, the back of wheeling, he's gonna go defensive, but I'm gonna go up the inside. And just park the car on the apex. Just keep the brakes on, keep the brakes on, keep the brakes on. Park it, park it. And he just can't go for that cutback. Prevent it from happening by putting the car on the apex. There's nothing he can do. And I'm up into seventh. Look how close this is. 2% of fuel left. I'm going to really have to fight for this one towards the end. So I've been using quite a lot of fuel there to try to get back into seventh. So I really do have to be very, very careful here because I kind of overused the fuel. 1% of fuel left couple of corners remaining in the race he's very very close behind i'm gonna to have to go defensive here into the final corner otherwise he'll go for that move just preserving the position on the exit not getting the cleans of exits still one percent of fuel zero percent left are we going to be able to coast over the line thankfully it didn't matter he actually ran out of fuel himself look at that he's actually just he's under attack here from the guards behind he just manages to finish an eighth i finished in seventh really happy with the result only eight seconds away from the lead in a top split race i will take that most certainly 279 points earned for that one and actually it turned out to be 281 when you look at the final standings here so i finished 37th in europe after the uh, first round and fifth in the uk so we can try and have a good uh, championship here to close out gran turismo sport ultimately it's a really fun couple of races i didn't expect it to be that fun especially given that it was a tuning race in a road car that i'm not particularly familiar with but i actually really enjoyed it so i'm going to be looking forward to the the remainder of the races but um that's the end of this one thank you so much for watching i shall catch you next time bye